We're going to hear the last movement of uh, the Schumann Piano Quartet in E-flat major, uh, written in what's called the, the chamber music year of Schumann. Schumann used to devote whole years to various things. And uh, in, in, in this particular year, I think he wrote his three string quartets and the piano quintet and the piano quart uh, and the piano and this piano quartet. And uh, he's an interesting case, of course, for many, many reasons. Uh, he was also a very uh, wonderful music critic and a writer. Um, and uh, he only wrote piano music until the age of 30. Nothing but. Uh, and then he began to branch out. So his, his, uh, his writing is always very piano-centric. And the challenge in uh, all of his chamber music with piano, and of course it was written for his wife, for Clara, uh, is to make it work, basically. But all the great composers, with the exception of perhaps Hindemith, were great pianists, and they wrote for themselves, although Schumann, who had injured his finger, could not do that. So we're going to hear the last movement, uh, played by the Kahlo Quartet. This is Ron Vig Sark, Lisa Sung, Clara Abel, and Llewellyn Sanchez Werner on the piano. Welcome back. Thank you. 
Are they, are they? Yeah. Okay, cool. Bravo. Well, it's nice that we end the, end the, 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 the uh, afternoon here with this uh, very boisterous, uh, exciting ending. So, this, um, of course, what's, have, you play, have you performed the piece yet? Yeah, not the whole piece. Not the whole thing? Just half of it. <laughs> so, what did, you, what did you perform? Third and fourth. Oh, third and fourth. So, you had the experience of tuning the cello up after the third movement, right? <laughs> yeah. The, the cello tunes down to a B flat, I guess, huh? And uh, it's very hard. The cello is never going to be in tune for this movement, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, that's OK. OK. The, you know, it's a funny thing. I know he gives you a very fast tempo, right, for, this, for the metronome, right? Somehow, uh, there, there needs to be a little more clarity. And especially when you get to the end, Dean, da dean, da dum, bum, beam, bum. That has to sound more oratorio like. You know, as a, as though it's singable in some way. Obviously, is not singable. That that comes inspired on the viola from obviously uh, Opus 59, number one, number three, Beethoven in the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a, you play it beautifully. Uh, let's go from the top a little bit. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, when you come in, what is your name? Uh, Llewellyn. You're Llewellyn. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I know he marks you forte, but you want to, you know, and you have to play as big as you can play when he comes in. Bop, 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 beep, bop, 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 bop. Don't be accommodating. There's, he's playing octaves, okay? So he's, he's and, and you've got to, it's somehow got to balance in some way. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for it. Hold on one second. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> It's better. It's, you know, you just have to, when we play with the piano, it's as though we're playing with a full orchestra, obviously. Yeah, and especially in Schumann, where, it's, where there's so much unison playing. So, yum, bum, bee. Somehow the accent is not coming out for the theme to me. I, I don't, yum, bum, bee, digga, 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 and then go. Make that note a really uh, something that you want to hold on to a little bit longer. Ding, dun, yum, digga, 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 and then go. And then we're and then we're off. Okay, try one more time. Um, and the same thing, you know. He uses it both at, at its bookends. He uses it at your first thing you hear and the last thing you hear, right? In this particular opening section. Okay, both as an introduction and as a little coda. <laughs> I would take a little breath. I would, bum, beam, bum. They won't know it. You know, they'll just think, it's just natural. And when you, when you all play this theme, da -dee -dee -da -dee -da -dee, I hear that all of you, lightning, I hear -dee -da -dee -da lightening up a little bit. I wouldn't do it. Da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da -dee, the way you would sing it. You would sing through it. So I would, I would crescendo through it. Don't drop the sound, okay? Important. Rum, bum, beam. Is that possible? Not really, yeah? <laughs> I think you guys can hit the, hit the, the accent harder. You're, you're being very civilized about it, but rum, bum, ya, ya. You're breaking it, I know, huh? But I would just, I would just hit it from above. I would go for it. Yeah. In, yeah, because of what we're competing with, okay? okay? And 
Also, be careful. Bum bum. Your five seven chord is just an eighth note. Bum bum. There's not enough pitch. At the moment, it sounds like a tiny little scherzando. Bum beam bum. Bum beam. That's we need more length and power to that note. Otherwise, we don't hear the cadence. In other words, be careful not to come so early with that eighth note. At the moment here, if it's too early, it will not have power. This was the secret of the Chicago Symphony for years with their very loud brass section. They played too loud, but they also understood that if they delay slightly, it's bigger. So be, set it a little bit. Okay, yeah, but no cello rondo from you. Okay. Absolutely subdivided so she can spread out. Okay, all right, right there. Okay, now, when a singer looks at a page of music, Okay, they, what is, what's the first thing they do? Oh, they look at the words. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> these guys are so, so smart and complicated. Okay, I'm looking for something much simpler. How are they going to survive the page? What do they do? Uh, figure out where to breathe. Where to breathe. And then the next thing most singers will do, they're going to look for, where's the longer note? Mm. Where's the note of length where I can go, <laughs> Naughty. And there's also a dissonance on that note. So if I, you're sustaining kind of through it, I would give it a, a, a blooming shape. We are all trying as string players to train ourselves with the bow to make vocal shapes. We are vocal imitators and at the world class level, you know, this is what the great players have been able to do somehow. And with piano, we try to, with smoke and mirrors, to create the illusion also that we're making vocal shapes. It's possible. Um, so, you know, we wait for these melodies if we're, yeah, and then we go to town. It's, you know, it's what you can do that he can't do. He's got one shape that he can make, okay? So enjoy. Okay, same thing. Yeah, but, but in other words, you, you don't have to be exactly with him, by the way. I'm one of the few uh, people in the world who says that I, I like it when things are actually not together, so that you have a kind of a, so that you sound free, unencumbered, <coughs> yeah, a free expression. So the, hold, hold that A, a flat as long as you care to. It's okay. If you're, if you're a little bit behind him, it's cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, but you're you're still lifting up. You go ha 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 ha, you know. So, uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. See, see if you can't you can't grow through the I see a portato. I'm. I'm a person who, your habit should be legato and, 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 yeah, and portato is a choice that you make eventually. You want to grow this, grow this, grow this, okay? Okay, good, one more time. Good. Okay, yeah, okay, but no accelerando. No accelerando, yeah? We want to get excited, we want to grow, but we do not want to chill around with the tempo particularly. Because otherwise, it, it, you're not, it, it won't bloom out enough. You should feel like you've got a lot of time and you're enjoying that about it. Okay? Okay. But we 
may need a little more shape to this. And we need a little more up and down in the sound. And then when you play, that has to be more lyric a little bit when you get to it. So we separate those gestures a little bit. Okay? Okay, that was good. Uh, where should we go from? 38 is good. Yeah, you know, Schumann writes a funny thing here, which is, bum, 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 bum. You can't really hear it, but it's, it's, it's off, displaced by, bum, 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 bum. And the whole point of it is that it sounds more appassionato. So go for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a whole, you know, we're in, we're in B flat major, we're enjoying it, and we're asking this question, yeah, okay? So it can be free, too. It can be quite free if you want to be. It doesn't have to be exactly metrical. Yeah. Yeah, but, but spread it out instead of moving forward. Yeah, let some of it spread. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Spread it some of it out. Yeah, yeah, but I need, I need, a, I need a breath in the middle of these bars. It's too much through. I need breaths in the middle of those bars. Do, do try one more time again. Sing, sing. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Play freely. Don't worry about being together. Take your time. Breath. Breath. Okay, good. And make sure that's the end of that section. Make sure that the cadence that they get to hear the resolution. Don't rush through it. And bring it down. And then I need more staccato. It has to be more staccato here. Yeah? Okay. Okay. In other words, we want a bunch, we want as much different gesture and as much uh, mix of culture as we can find in the piece, you know? I'm convinced that all the great composers took what they heard around them, you know, and they used it. And again, this is real German music. This is, yeah, this is actual, actual real live German culture. Yeah. Again, scary music from, what, 1843? What is it? Is it 1843? This is? Two? 42. Okay. Okay? Bup, 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 bup. And hold it back. Bup, 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 Yeah. Uh, where should we do? You want to play your little cadenza? Da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da. What is that? Three pickups to whatever that is. 53. Yeah. 53. You know, this moment, don't be, don't be timid about this moment because this is your little cadenza. This is when we don't have, you don't have to worry about balancing with them. Go for it. That's it. Too fast. Yeah. And then run that. Yeah. That should be almost above the tempo. So we have this clock going. And of course, what is this? Where does it come from? Opening. Well, yes, but where does that come from? Yeah. Okay. Okay. From the end of the third movement, huh? Yeah.
Then it, when then we run the last two bars. Then we're going. Okay, make sense? But we want to hear the reference. Yeah, the end of the movement previous to this is this beautiful starry night thing. It's a wonderful moment, and somehow it has. To, they have to know that it refers to that. Because they probably won't, re ding, bum, ba, they're not going to know that. Mm. They'll, they'll get it here. Okay. Mm. Same thing, maestro. Bum, 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 bum. That should be massive, the, 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 that, that little eighth note. Okay? Yeah. Good. Let's do from, um, what is that bar? 81. 81. And of course, bum, 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 beam, bum, bum, bum. We want to build these first four bars. So make sure you have somewhere to go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beam, bum, beam, bum, beam, beam, bum, beam, bum, beam. Brum, brum, brum. Okay? We're building to, the, to that cadence. <laughs> They were a little uh, tough before. They're just there to bring up the dissonance, right? So he make them a little round. Okay. Yeah. Not so just hit. We need a second sound in there somewhere. What Joel Krasny calls a second sound. You've heard that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I figured. So let's do from um, right there. What is it? What is sure. It? 89. 89. Okay, but you know Schumann was in a way just as ostinato a composer as Beethoven. You have the second symphony of Schumann, it goes goes on forever. So don't let it rush. Don't let the ends of the bars go. Yeah, it's kind of a monster, you know? A strange mechanical creation. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Sing. Gesture with a crescendo. Wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay? Then we'll give it a little more attention for these guys. They want you to, you know, bother them. Okay? Okay. So where where was our last piano? What's on the piano here? Yeah. So 112. 112. Yeah, okay, yeah. But 
would you play this alone to strings one time? We need to hear this three-part stretto. It's really quite wonderful. Right there. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Because what we want to hear always, we want to hear the accent, bing, 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 pop out. That's the most important thing. So that, don't worry too much about the other notes, but just slam the accent at each other. Be competitive. Okay? Right there. No, wait, wait, no, yeah, but no piano. I need, the, in other words, I think they need the accent even, even more profile, even more profile. Bing, 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 okay? And somehow you've got to support that, yeah? You've you, you got to somehow integrate so that we do hear that, that stretto, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get to here, it was a little heavy. Boom, boom, a little, yeah, leggero here. Yeah, the, yeah, those, yeah, the first one. Okay. All right. Same place now with the with the all right, Llewellyn. Yeah. So what I would say to you is do the same thing. Bring out the sforzando and the accents. Everything else drop. Okay. You have you have some some notes sforzando, some notes accent, right? Right. That's what we want. Okay. Then it'll work. That's it. Too much break. And now, my question is, what's the primary voice here? What's, that what's that the is the real? question. <laughs> yeah. For I'll tell you, my opinion is that's for me. That's the espressivo. I don't think that the chromatic is is so terribly interesting, honestly. So when you guys when you have it together with his left hand, mm -hmm. then it really needs to come out in the second half of it. Yeah. Yeah. Then I would bring the, the left hand out more. Okay. So yeah. And this figure actually comes a little bit from the Opus 132 Beethoven last movement of the quartet. It's big time in there. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Okay? So bring that out and, the, and make the, the chromatic a little, a little bit more complimental. Okay? Just do yum, bum, beam, bum, bum, um. And then not such a long break. Bum 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 bum. Too short. Bum, it's come more. More. Yeah. So here we have to exaggerate. Let's exaggerate. So see, maybe you'll hate it. Maybe it'll, tomorrow you're going to have your rehearsal and say, wasn't that awful what he said? <laughs> you know, but that's okay. That's okay. But try it out and see, see how you feel about it. So he's going to play freely, as he did, and then you guys have to play more. We have to alter the dynamics for Schumann sometimes. And we do it with the orchestra pieces, too, because mm -hmm. Schumann uh, had problems with reality. You know, <laughs> He was a, a terribly... It's a mystery, actually, apparently, as to what he really suffered from. But, but the, the resultant effect was that he was very manic, you know. And obviously, this was written at a high, you know, this particular movement. But, but uh, I would bring it, when you have it in octaves, bring it, bring it up and, and play it out, okay? Like a concerto. So, same. Same thing? Yeah. Bumpy. Okay, yeah, I already said it, in, I think, in the last coaching, but, you know, when we're really going to work and uh, when, when we're really suffering in, on the stage is when we're playing a legato like this. 
because the, the, you, you need the legato to come out as, as, as big as any separately bowed note. Yeah? That's it. So it can be yet more. Okay. Believe it or not. It's, in terms of the, of the total picture here, the total sound, they need to hear more of, of you guys. Do you mean you to to I didn't, No, I thought you were playing the gato, but, but oh. you, know, you can grow it. I see her. For me, the, you know, the, 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 there are many great legato players in history, but there are many beautiful documented moments of legato. I mean, Isaac uh, Stern was arguably one of the great legato players. He could really do that. You know, the Bach oboe violin concerto slow movement, it's just grand. It helps you have a good Del Jesu, but a nice <laughs> fiddle. But on the other hand, uh, you know, so you want to be able to, we want to hear the change of note under the legato. Mm, okay. That's what we're featuring. And that's a great sound on the instrument. It really is. It's my favorite sound on, the, on any string instrument, is the change of note under the legato. You know, it's why I used to like listening to wind players, oboes and clarinets. And, could you hear that machinery? You know, it's really good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sing. Uh, uh, no. Where do you want to do? Do the do it. Yeah. Do do sing. Do sing. Is it Mark Mezzo Forte or something like that? Right away, grab it. Okay, we it, it, and it's got to be very big, right away. Right there. Go ahead.
<laughs> Before we resolve that uh, six five chord, okay. Now we're into here. We're into oratorio land. Bom bom beam ba beam ba bom. Not too not too double dotted. I mean, rather be some bom 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 bom. You can even play this bom beam ba beam ba beam. Wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay. Din ta din ta din. Okay. Oratorio. Here we go. <laughs> Try that at the frog. So you're going to go pa 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 Start building to the end. We're gonna have this phrase three times. Yum bum bee bum bee yum bum bee bum bee, and then we're then we're going. So be careful that this that the first is not too loud. Yum beam bum. I know he marks fortissimo, but the real fortissimo is gonna happen here. Okay. We did the third beat of uh, three or six. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that was good. So we have the running sixteen notes, and against it, ding da ding da ding da ding da ding. Yeah, very M Mendelssohnian. Okay, so. Where should we go from? Yeah, and by the way, we move those guys. Right? Let's do it right there. Second beat of... Uh, 366? 266? Is it 366? 266. Okay. Thank you all for coming today. Hi, Mom. Thanks for coming. One of the great jazz singers of, of, of the 20th century. <laughs> um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the wonderful talent we hear at the Juilliard School. And uh, thank you for being here. Yeah.